start recording. So welcome back to Oxidation Reduction. I'm not dressed as the lion today. I went for the safari outfit. So I'm like looking for the lion. And, and my lion, my Rocky, comes and helps me with this. Um, so we did the first three pages. And uh, the other thing, Harrison, is the voltaic stack. You can also try making one of those if you'd rather. In the discussion we were just having. Um, so I think we're on page 54 of our notes. And the first page is review of some of the stuff we did yesterday and then taking it the next step. So let's go ahead and walk through this. Our first step is we're going to split it into the two half reactions. And this one is acidic. And my light's going to do that funny stuff. Get the gnome shadow. All right, so we have the copper solid going to the copper ion. And then our other half reaction, maybe it's, I have it too close, uh, the nitrate going to the NO2. So just be careful that you write your charges. You just pay attention to detail. Um, and these just take a little bit of practice, and then they end up being very comfortable. Because once you get them, um, and the first page, I did post the study set for Friday. So tomorrow is kind of a slower day. The only thing you have is the QA3 lab, which is similar to the QA1. Uh, it's just eight steps instead of four. So the whole lab is just that. You do the post lab questions and the flow chart is bigger because it's eight steps. Um, so you'll want to start on this homework set then. So get the entropy stuff and everything. So we want to balance the first equation simple. We just need to balance with electrons. So the plus two means I need two electrons. Electrons are negative, so they're going to go on this side, so both sides come out neutral. So the other equation we have, first we need to balance our um, reactants, I'm sorry, our elements, the nitrogen and nitrogen are balanced. Oxygen, to balance the oxygen, I'm going to add what? and none of you have done that and you practice with this, you're gonna add water. So that can be like your goal tomorrow is to get the first page of the study set because that is just these reactions. So you've got these reactions down and the other pieces are just math, so they're not so bad. Um, so we need just one water, so that gives me the three oxygens. Then the two hydrogens, I do two hydrogen ions and then I need just one electron on this side. The nitrate already has a negative one. So there's my two negatives balance the positive two. Um, all right, before we go on, before we add them together, the key to adding them together is your electrons have to cancel. The electrons will always be on opposite sides in your two half reactions because one reaction is losing and one is gaining. So we need two electrons in both equations. I recommend actually going through and multiplying that second equation by two. Write in all your numbers. Um, I recommend again using different colors can be really helpful for, um, they really help me and I've seen lots of students that helps. And then we just bring it together. Now, you know, this is really unfortunate. Maybe it happens smart. Um, the reactions that I happen to pick, we don't have any of our waters canceling out. That's going to happen on our next one. Um, but sometimes both equations will have water. And if they do, they're either going to cancel or come together. So just watch for that. And we'll see an example either today or tomorrow. Um, so our electrons cancel. And we end up with five hydrogen ions the two nitrates and the copper solid. And again, it doesn't matter the order you put them in, but you're gonna see me always putting the hydrogens and the waters on the outsides. Um, and then we get our copper ion and the two NO2s and the two waters. And then I recommend to always take a deep breath and you can check the balance by just checking your oxygens. So I have six oxygens, and then over here I have four and two, um, and then checking the charge. So I have a plus two over on this side, 
on my product side, and here I have a plus four and a minus two. So positive four minus two, that does give me the same charge. Um, so again, those are the steps to walk through, and it takes practice. It really takes practice. So I would recommend going through the ones in, we, we do them today, we'll do them again tomorrow. A uh, question came up earlier Friday. I will be doing a lecture. It is gonna be a review lecture because your midterm is next week. So there's our final answer. The final answer does not have charges. So we're gonna do one more thing before we do the next one. And you're gonna be asked which one is the oxidation and which one is the reduction. So my copper is losing electrons. So the electrons are on the product side. That is your Leo. That is oxidized. I, I like to just write Leo because that is losing electrons. And um, then the other one would be our GER or reduced gaining electrons. you're going to have blanks to fill in. So you would tell me, it's going to always be what element was oxidized or reduced. So the copper, the copper two is in, I'm sorry, what element is oxidized? The copper is oxidized. The copper with the plus two is in the oxidized state. So it's just um, an interpretation of how, how the question is asked. Um, the other piece, just to remind you, well, a couple more pieces. So since the little battery is there, um, which one was the anode? Oh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be the best. That's like 12 miles. I don't expect that you remember it yet. Um, by next week, you'll know it, and it will stay there forever and ever, hopefully. Uh, the trick I use is because Leo starts with a vowel. Uh, oxidized is always the anode. So the anode is oxidized. And so reduction, the other one is called the cathode. This is the same with the terms anion and cation. Um, they all come from this and it has to do with what we'll be talking about tomorrow. Um, you know, I don't think he knows he's there. I'm gonna kick him out. All right. Questions? We're going to do this next equation. And I'm going to actually pause the video in a moment and I'm going to have you guys do it. You don't, um, we're going to make it basic, but making it basic is the last step we do after we go through the whole thing. I'm, I'm going to make this comment about basic. There are all these really cool tricks students will find and then they'll decide they want to teach them to everybody. And I am not part of your guys' Discord thing. Um, those tricks usually confuse most students. I am aware of them. I absolutely know them. Um, this method works for everyone because it's systematic. Do it the same way. And get, I'm going to turn off the video, give you a few minutes to try it, and then I'll turn it back on and go through it for everyone. So you guys at home, just stop me and try it um, up to getting to the H's, and then I'll show you how to bring in the hydroxides. Okay, Joey knows how this plays. I just stopped recording. But um, so your first step is your half reactions. So we write our two half reactions. And so don't say, I have no idea how to do it. Write your two half reactions. So when you do the homework, it's so nice. You can just copy everything and get your five points. That's going to end up hurting you and costing you more than that. So you want to actually try those and then check your answers. And you don't have to check every single step that I go through, you just have to check your final answer. If it's the same as mine, you're good to go. Um, so the CN becomes CNO. Make sure you put those little negative charges. And the MnO4 permanganate becomes MnO2. So when you see it's basic, treat it as if it's acidic until the last step. So we'll walk through. Uh, one carbon for each of them one nitrogen. So the oxygen you balance by adding water. Um, and that we have that note on the first page. And whenever you add the water, 
that's going to mean you're going to have to add hydrogens. Now, a quick comment, all the ones that I have done so far, and this is almost always true, that the water is on one side and the hydrogen's on the other side, that is not an always. There are some cases where they end up on the same side. Um, it just depends on what chemistry we're working with. Uh, and then we want to balance our electrons. So there's different ways to look at it. I always look at the whole piece. I see this negative and this negative and I ignore them. So all I'm looking at is these two positive. So I need two electrons on this side. Again, it takes practice with the charge. Um, that's just how my brain sees it. I look at the whole thing instead of all the little pieces. Uh, or you could say this side has a negative one and this side has a plus one. So you need two electrons. All right, the second equation, I will also need waters. Um, so I have the one MN, and then I'll need two waters on the product side to balance my two oxygens. So I have four oxygens total, two plus two. And then I'll have four hydrogens that I need to balance on the other side. And then the electrons will be on the reactant side because electrons are always opposite. Uh, and this one, I am going to need three electrons. So my products are simple, they're neutral. So this side has to end up neutral. So my positive four has to have four negatives to balance it. So I have a negative one and three more negatives. All right, questions up to that point. So the next step is we need the electrons to cancel. You have a two and a three. So the first equation we're going to multiply by three and the second one by twos. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that. So you're not trying to look up and copy down from me. So you're going to have three waters, three cyanides, three cyanates. So three, three, three. And then the hydrogens become six and my electrons become six. And my second equation, I'm going to multiply by two. So the electrons have to be the same. The electrons lost have to be the same as the electrons gained. So six electrons and then eight hydrogens, two permanganates, two MnO2s, and four waters. Um, and now we're going to add it together. So this does what I was trying to mention. So my electrons are going to cancel out. That is the absolute thing that has to cancel out. Um, I do this different from the books and online because, again, I found this was the most effective way and the um, best way for teaching. Uh, some of the hydrogens cancel. We have hydrogens on both sides of the equation. So it's similar like Hess's law. It's, it's just algebra. It's, it's like advanced algebra, advanced, advanced algebra. So we had six hydrogens on the product side and eight on the reactant side. So when I bring it down, these six will cancel. These eight will now just be two of them. So I'll have two hydrogens on my reactant side. The same thing's going to happen with the waters. If you look, you have three waters on the reactant side and four waters on the product side. So the three are going to cancel. When you X them, um, I would just do it lightly. I would not erase, and that four becomes a one. So I have two hydrogens, three cyanides, two permanganates, and then you end up with three cyanates. Again, the order doesn't matter, but the numbers, the coefficients do, and just one water. All right, that would be correct if it was acidic. Questions up to that point. So this is the first time we saw where the water was in both equations and the hydrogens and we can cancel them out. And again, almost always they will be on opposite sides. Um, and so they will cancel out when they're in both equations. The electrons have to cancel out, but the hydrogens will usually only partially cancel out. So the last step. So that's why I have this little note up here, treat it as if it's acidic until the last step. So we're adding an extra step on. Um, and that last step is we now have to make it basic by adding hydroxides. 
And what I found is students hear that part and they're like, okay, I add hydroxides, um, but they miss this part where it says to each side of the equation. You can't just suddenly add hydroxides. You have to, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So the hydrogens were there to balance those hydrogens. What I'm gonna do is for every hydrogen, you add that many hydroxides. So two hydrogens, I add two hydroxides, but I have to add two hydroxides to my other side also. I'm just putting them in parentheses so you don't think I said 20 hydrides. All right, the hydrogens and the hydroxides do not cancel. This where it gets a little messy, that's why there was more room there. Um, these guys don't cancel, they form water. So we now have two H2Os on this side. We're gonna rewrite it nicely. There are waters on both sides. So we have to reduce the water. You can only have the water on one side. You can only have hydrogens on one side or whatever you have. Um, and so our H2O on the product side cancels. I'll have just one H2O on my reactant side. So my final equation is H2O plus three cyanides plus two MnO4s permanganates. And then go ahead and see if you can bring down your reactant side. Um, so three CNOs, see if I can do better today than yesterday, right? Two MnO2s and then two, and again, I just put my OH in parentheses when I'm teaching so that you don't think it's a 20. Um, it might be a good thing in your notes just to be careful of that. The negative would be inside. Uh, we're going to do a quick check to make sure we got it. So we're going to count oxygens. There's oxygens everywhere. So here I have two times four, which is eight plus one more. So I have nine oxygens. Over here I have three plus four, which is seven plus two more. Oh good, nine. So where you take a deep breath, right? You're doing this on a test and you're like, oh good, the oxygens worked. And then you just hope for the best. And say a prayer, whatever your prayer is. Um, three negatives and two negatives. So I have a negative five. And over here, I have three negatives and two negatives. So it's balanced. You do not have to go through every step of balancing. Um, so Natasha, we're on page 54 of the notes and just walking through balancing equations. The basic ones always have that extra step. And again, it just takes practice. Today, worry about getting your thermodynamics um, homework and everything in and what normally I'd be doing today is the final lab, and it was like the most wonderful lab. Um, it was uh, qualitative analysis where you did it yourself, and it was always really fun um, and really nice to see how much you had learned over the year. Um, all right, I said we're doing a lot of math. Can I ask a question? So I'm gonna answer your question one moment. Well, she asked her question, what I want you guys to do is to go back and figure out which of the half reactions was your Leo and which was your Ger. So Juliana, I think that was your voice. What's your question? Yes, um, on the product side, why did you cross out the two H2Os and go down to one? Or over sorry, here? reactant, Cause, reactant. Because of this one over here on the product side. The one on the product side canceled one of the two on this side. Okay. Do you see that? So there were two, the two hydrogens and two hydroxides made two waters, and then that canceled out that water that was left over there. You can only, your final answer, water can only be on one side. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, that's why I said these get a little bit messy sometimes. So just make sure you give yourself room. Don't write huge on the basic ones because there's always this extra step. Like on the acidic ones, we have the two half reactions in our final. Um, the basic ones, you'll have your two half reactions, you'll get your final, and then we have to basify it, which is a real word. All right, back to Leo Gurr. Um, how I wrote it with the cyanide equation first, that's my Leo. 
and my uh, GER would be my permanganate. That actually makes sense. Permanganate is used as an oxidizing agent. So the permanganate, I'm going to write OA under it. Whatever is gaining electrons, that reactant is called your oxidizing agent. So the cyanide is your reducing agent. The agents have to be a reactant. Um, so like in the one above it, the copper was oxidized. So the copper solid is the reducing agent because it's the one that caused the other one to go through reduction. And the NO3 would be the oxidizing agent. Um, it's also called the oxidizer. Most people talk about oxidizers. Um, and they have a special, like everybody's heard about acids and that they have a special card when you work with them in lab. Actually, oxidizing agents are just as significant um, and they have a special placard um, when you see the trucks go by with all those things. So I, I think of that because nitrate's interesting because nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent and it's also a strong acid. So it's like a double dose of what it can do. All right, that's rating the reactions, and we will be doing more of those in a little bit. I wanted to review the batteries um, and writing the bat drawing the batteries. So this ends up being have fun with these, but we're going to go through drawing one again. Uh, just a couple, this is like the wordy part. This is called an electrochemical cell. That is actually important. There's several names for the same thing. So electrochemical. So today, if you were in today's presentations, Joseph talked about electrolysis because he did Humphrey Davies. Um, and then yesterday, uh, Nadia talked about Faraday. Um, we're gonna be talking about electrolysis tomorrow and that is not the same as this. This, the key here is this is spontaneous. This is a battery. Oh, it tells you that, right, spontaneous. That is actually key. Um, it is also known as a galvanic cell, so that's also where the word galvanized came from, which was um, a famous guy, and I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to remember if he's the one who did the stuff where the frog was dead, and then he could do the thing where he saw the frog's leg would still jump, because there was a current still going through the nerves. If you learn about that in biology, it's like, how is that morally correct, but... Uh, and then voltaic cell is that first um, fax that I showed on the first page, which was the first battery. Uh, Bolt was the guy who made the first stack like that. And then I think Galvin took one of those stacks and started doing stuff with frog legs. All right, and that's a battery. Um, the whole thing that's going on with this chapter is electrons are moving around. Uh, they always go through, as this says, an external pathway. And that's what we're gonna diagram here. So there's always, in an electrochemical cell, there are always two cells. They are separated. So I showed it two different ways yesterday, actually three different ways if you really caught it. So you can draw it as two different cells or you can draw it as one and split it. I like drawing it as two you want to put an electrode in. So this is a piece of metal. So the electrode is a piece of metal. Yesterday we did platinum because there were no metals in our question. Today we have metals. So one side's going to be nickel. So this is my nickel solid. That's supposed to be an I. So you got like a piece of nickel, like what nickels are made out of. And the other one would be a piece of copper. Um, I've actually had somebody do this for their demo. So before we go on, we're going to write our two half reactions out. I'm going to do them over to the side. This one's pretty simple, so you can probably see it without writing them, but it will be helpful for your teacher. And many of you are, have been telling me you're a little bit sleep deprived today. So the nickel solids going to nickel ion plus two electrons. So that would give us balancing it out. That is losing electrons. So this is my Leo. In the half cell, you don't write the full reaction. 
you would write the nickel ion is in the solution. So this is a solution, that's like my water level. Nickel solid is here. And so what's happening is the electrode is actually, you're losing the electrode. The electrode at the end of the experiment will actually be smaller than it was to start with. Um, the copper will be the exact opposite. So the copper is gonna gain electrons to go to copper solid. So the copper ion is in the solution and it's going and forming. So your copper um, electrode is actually gonna grow, which is kind of cool. All right, you have to connect them. Again, the key is the external pathway. So you can have as much fun as you want with your wire. You're gonna connect it. Now we have to show the flow of electrons and label, oh, and then you have to make your bridge. Right. You can make your bridge as beautiful as you want. You can make a suspension bridge. Your teacher is not really good at making bridges. My bridge looks like a cat bridge. You can make cars on your bridge. But now it's show our flow of electrons. You make the guy fishing on the bridge. You make the shark. They usually make fun of my fish because I get to draw really big on the board. Anyway, you can have fun with your picture. Just let your inner child out. It's really good for you to make an elaborate picture here so that you're not taking yourself or anything too seriously because it's really not worth it. You can be doing yoga on your bridge. You can just be meditating. You can have somebody down here swimming. You can have Alexander was here before. He can have a guy scuba diving. This person floating on their back. I'm not very good at drawing the pictures. Very swimming. Well, you could be swimming with the dolphins. That'd be great. All right. So the nickel is Leo. It's oxidized. That means it is the anode. And your teacher's cheesy way oxidized is an O, anode's an A, they're both vowels, and I will get that piece right even when I do all the rest of it wrong. Anode is negative, because the way they say it in the rest of the world is anode, or on, I can't even say it right, anions is anions, so I had a guy who was from Britain one year in my class, and it was the first time I heard it said that way. Uh, the other one is your cathode. So cats have positive. That works with this electrochemical. It works today. Um, this is our GER side or our reduction. And again, that's just my acronym for oxidation reduction. The electrons are always flowing to the GER because it's gaining electrons. So the electrons you show them in your wire moving towards the GER. It doesn't matter to me which side you show the GER on, but this is gaining electrons. So the electrons in the wire are flowing that way. That's why its cathode is positive. The electrons are attracted to that positive of the electrode. We have to complete the circuit with our bridge. So it's not just drawing the bridge. You have anions. All right, you can see my word enough. Uh, anions like nitrate, NO3, and they are flowing opposite direction. So there's a circuit of negativity. So this way the anions are always flowing towards the anode. It's where the names came from. They go together. They were all named at the same time. Anions flowed to the anode. If you would rather draw a cat walking across your bridge because you like to draw cats, the cat would be walking towards the cathode. All right, no mice on this chart. Can't throw any more mice, but you can draw a cat. Oh, see, I could have dressed up like a cat today. I went on safari, I'm on safari. Um, questions about the battery. Again, let that be your inner child come out, be playful. So we're gonna do some calculations where your 
Now we have to switch back to the other side of the brain. I don't know which one does what, doesn't really matter. It's all one beautiful brain and now it's all balanced. It's like that with Chatelier's equilibrium. We don't want to be too much on one side. We want everything good. Um, so we're going to calculate the cell potential, which is a funky term, but it means we're calculating E, not. It means we need that chart at the end of our notes. Um, here we go. So we're doing nickel. And there's my nickel. We used it yesterday. And the issue with my nickel is this equation is the one that's flipped here. I started here with the nickel solid and it's losing electrons. This chart, everything's always gaining. So here we go. What happens to my E? Harrison's having Harrison, you have to oh. sing the alphabet. So what do I do with my E? Anybody else? Sing the alphabet. Somebody else knows. Maybe, maybe he's the only one here. Go ahead, Harrison. I was going to say, you need to flip it. Oh, wait, what, Alexander? Don't you have to flip it? The, flip what? The charge. This charge, yeah, you change the charge. So since it was a negative, when you flip the equation, you change the charge to a positive. And again, those of you who like the book, the book does it different. I'm absolutely aware of the, how the book does it. It requires your teacher to think too much while she's teaching. Um, so this, I don't have to think. Which means you don't have to think either because it's just like what we did with Hess's Law stuff, which this test goes much nicer. All right, the copper one is up above it. Um, so there was my nickel, there was my copper. The copper is written correctly. It's the reduction half reaction. So we just use that number how it is. So it is 0 0.337. I don't know why some of them are two sig figs and some are three and some are four, but we're all gonna use the same chart. Um, 0.587 volts. They do show the positives and negatives, but that's not a big deal. That positive means it is spontaneous. And I just realized you can't see what I'm writing. You can hear me. All right. This means it's spontaneous. Spontaneous means what? Maybe. You know, when I ask this tomorrow, you're gonna answer much better, I hope, because you'll have done your homework. Spontaneous means the easiest answer is product favored. It means it's going that I drew my picture correct today as opposed to yesterday. Spontaneous means the true definition is once the reaction is started, it continues on its own. So once you give it the push, these electrons will keep moving. It just keeps going and going. It's the Energizer Bunny. Uh, it will go until the electrons run out, until the electrons have all moved to the cathode and there are no more electrons to move, then it will stop. Um, but once you hook up the wires and let it go, it will go. We're going to do the free energy now. So free energy. What's the symbol? That's what your homework's on today. Again, hopefully it'll be a better answer tomorrow. But the good news is those of you who are here, we are going to do some review that's on your homework today on the next page. Um, free energy is delta G, and the equation I showed you yesterday is simply this. So delta G equals negative NFE. Um, the cell potential, we'd plug in. The N is our electrons, and that is from this equation. There's two electrons. There is a negative here in front. And then F is Faraday's constant. So 96,500 coulombs per electron. Uh, they often say in chemistry coulombs per mole of electron, but you can just say C is for coulombs or charge per electron. 
Uh, and then the E is, I want to remind you, 0.587. A bolt is actually a joule per coulomb. I recommend that you write it like that when you put it into this equation, because every person who does not is going to miss something, which is they're going to think they're in kilojoules. Um, and then you're going to divide by a thousand to change your joules to kilojoules. And Um, so negative 113 kilojoules. I divided the 1,000 joules to a kilojoule, so I divided by the 1,000. And the answer makes sense. You will be asked this, does your answer make sense? E is positive, delta G is negative. That is spontaneous. This question keeps showing up on the next page, and that's what I'm looking for. So here's the question. If we then solved for K, which we'll do on the next page with another problem, what kind of k value would I find, just in general? If it's product favored, the k has to always be, go ahead, Natasha. Greater than one? It is, k will be greater than one. So if we solved e is positive, delta g is negative, and then if we did the last step, um, this is the equation, delta G equals negative RT natural log of K. If we solve for K, K would be greater than 1. Uh, I want to warn you to be careful. There are negatives in both of these delta G equations because of that weird thing that happens with free energy. And it goes back to Gibbs, like all of his math and stuff, which is well beyond my understanding. We're going to move on to the next page. And comes after 53 is 55. All right. So there it is. Catherine, this is for you watching at home. You can go, there's the equation. It might look a little bit different. Over here is uh, she, her famous chemist was Nernst. And actually, when she picked him, I started giggling because Everything he worked on had to do with what we're doing here for exam three. So he ends up being the most relevant. Also the one Natasha picked, which was Le Chatelier, which is the whole term just keeps going back to Le Chatelier's principle. And we'll get to that one actually down here when it makes sense. You have to use this principle. Um, this E naught, this is the chart. So that's the E naught there. This is going to be simplified. The R is a constant, that's the 0 0.008314, or I'm sorry, uh, this time we use 8.314 because we're using joules because we're in volts. The T is 298, unless you're told otherwise, and Faraday's constant. So since RTF is a constant, we just punch them all in and we get 0 0.0257. The N is electron moles. So in like this equation that we're going to do, there's two electrons. I can see that because it just goes from a plus two on this side to a plus two. Uh, again, the E naught is the chart. And this E is not standard. The Q is what we've been doing the whole term, products over reactants. It is you solving for your K except we're not at standard conditions. Um, and then a reminder, what the standard, oh, I asked it, what are standard conditions and how, because that we're gonna need, because you were going to be explaining on every one of these why it makes sense. Because if it makes sense to you, then you know, oh good, I, I'm pretty good with that question. I'm ready to move on. And uh, standard conditions, again, 298 Kelvin which unless I change your temperature, that is your temperature. Um, and then one molar. So right off, this is gonna be non-standard. Um, if you're working with gases, it's one ATM. So if we see, I don't think I did a gas on this page. All right, so to be able to use this formula with this equation, First thing you're going to need to do 
you want to give yourself enough space. This equation is not that hard, but you're going to want to write your two half reactions and figure out your E from your chart. So go ahead and do that. Well, I find what I did with my chart. And find purple. Okay. So your two half reactions, iron solid to iron ion plus two electrons. When you look on the chart for that one, this is the one that's flipped. Um, this was a reminder I was going to make earlier about the chart. I mentioned it yesterday. Iron shows up at least two, maybe three times. You don't want this iron up here because that's the plus three to plus two. You want to make sure you pick the one that is the one for the equation. So the plus two to the solid, but we have to flip the sign. So it's going to be a positive 0 0.44. They're usually like delta H's written after the half reaction. So we're just not writing huge because we're going to do the math underneath. And then the cadmium um, plus its two electrons going to cadmium solid. And that on the chart is negative 0.4. What I found in past years is the students who like say they can do all of it in their head end up getting it wrong. So they're like, oh, I don't have to write the half reactions. They're so simple. I can just look on the chart. Um, so write your half reactions. Your E net is your E naught is going to be 0 0.04 volts. It's really small. It's pretty close to zero, which is nothing happening. All right, this is our formula. <clears throat> so you will be stating the formula with the variables. Um, you do have another midterm, which is next Monday. I would recommend if you do your homework, you're going to know this stuff, but you can make yourself a little note card um, because time is a factor and they've always done the time is going to be less than the second midterm. Um, because this test, you don't have all the mice charts. Um, so if you're doing all your work and stuff, you should be able to work through it, no problem. All right, now we're going to just substitute in. And so our E naught is what we just figured out. 0 0.04 uh, minus the 0 0.0257. The N is your electron, so we can see that was two electrons. The unit, you just say is electrons, the 0 0.0257, no unit. Uh, and then natural log, and I should have written it, I wrote it up here as Q. I'm going to, instead of writing Q, I'm going to do it for this equation. We ignore the solids. Back to the very first lesson with equilibrium. So it would just be the iron ion over the cadmium ion. We don't have any exponents because there's no coefficients. So the cadmium, I didn't give you a number for it. If I don't give you a number, it means it's standard. So typically we only give you a number if it's not. The iron is on top, so it's just a natural log of 0 0.01 over 1. And you punch it in. You don't have to rearrange. You're just punching it straight in, and you get my answer, 0 0.0992. I'll take a deep breath if anybody wants to try punching it in. Um, and again, if you're not happy with your test scores, some of the people who did really remarkable um, on both tests or really remarkable on like the second test, they went back and redid their notes. They walked through. And so this time you have the weekend. Use your weekend wisely. Um, use your weekend wisely. This is our last weekend. Next, the weekend after, you can do whatever you want. We're done. All right, it's almost over. Hard to believe. Um, you are going to be explaining to me why this makes sense. So the only change is the iron ion, and we decreased it. 
100 fold. So a decrease of iron, which is on the product side. So I'll just put a note to make sure you got that. It's on the product side, right? It's over here. According to Le Chatelier, and Natasha taught this beautifully today, if I reduce the product, Natasha, what's going to happen? You did that really cool thing with the water and... That was Dr. Russell, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was thinking, yeah. So if you reduce the product, uh, if you take out, it's going to flow towards the products. It's going to shift. Yes. Because whatever, you whatever you're depleting, it has to go back and make more of that. So it's going to shift forward. Uh, you're going to hear me use words that I cringe using, but... Um, I'm not somebody who believes in cause and effect, and you'll get to hear about why next week. But the cause is the iron decreasing, the effect is the shift. We're done. Um, so by it shifting, it makes it more spontaneous if it shifts forward. So that means there's going to be more spontaneous, which we measured as an increase in, oops, that's not an E naught. The cell potential increased from standard. Standard is 0.04. We're now at 0.0992. So we see an increase in E. That's all I'm looking for. You're saying what happened, how it shifted. If it shifts forward, your E is going to go up. If it shifts reverse, your E is going to go down. All right, then I have some more words there in the middle of the page that don't really matter that much. But if E was zero, this whole thing rearranges, and we get another equation where you can change E directly to K. Um, I used to teach that, but what it was, was another equation. My recommendation is we do what we did, we're gonna do it on this page. In, in your homework that you're doing today, you're gonna change delta G's to K's and K's to delta G's. So why do we need an equation? And we have an equation that we just did that we'll be doing again um, where we can change E's to delta G's or delta G's to, uh, to the voltage. So I don't know why we need an equation to change E to K, but if you want, that's what this wording is for. We're going to move on. Here's our equation. So first step you're going to do is write your half reactions and use your chart. And then you can plug in and try that. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to play with that. I'm going to pause the video so you don't have to watch me twiddling my thumbs. See if I do it right this time. You guys at home, pause the video, try it, and then start it up while I do it. Well, that was perfect timing, right when the FedEx guy is flying over. Um, I started recording right as the plane comes in low. Today somebody was presenting and a plane flew right over their house. It was, it's, it's just this wonderful age we've come into where consumerism has become even bigger. They should really have called it the consumer virus because people have become bigger consumers because we don't want to run out of anything. Um, and there are some people who've made a lot of money off of this virus, makes you wonder. Uh, I wanted to start talking and you can keep doing it if you've got it, but there, I wanted to make sure your half reactions. So two electrons plus the sil two silver ions. Um, I actually had already balanced your equation for you. Sometimes, usually I don't, sometimes I have it balanced. Uh, so you have to make sure your electrons are gonna cancel out. All right, and then the mercury, is again a liquid it goes to mercury two ion plus two electrons by the way when you did the qa1 lab this is not the ion we worked with it was uh, the mercury one which is the diatomic all right uh, we have to look at the chart so you want to be careful on the chart because mercury shows up in two places if i can find it and the mercury is the one that gets flipped. Oh, interesting. All right, I'm gonna show you something with the chart. That the mercury and the silver are right next to each other on the chart. 
And so the silver is written how it is on your equation. The mercury is the one that got flipped. The reason I said, oh, that's really interesting, uh, is we're going to have a negative answer. So if you're asked to write the equation, you will always flip the lower one on the chart, the lower half reaction on the chart. If I give you equation, you just go with how it is. So the mercury was the one that's flipped, right? So negative 0.855 volts and positive 0 0.80 volts. So that's how I got my answer there. So again, when one of them, one of the equations is always flipped, you change its sign. So it asked, what is the anode? Actually, we can't do that. It's not spontaneous. So it wasn't meant as a trick question. Your teacher was just writing questions down and had not solved them. And then when I went and solved them, put the answers, I didn't realize I still had that question. Um, so it would actually be a really good question. So since it's not spontaneous, we're not going to do a battery. Um, but we can go through these next steps. State the formula. And I recommend when you get to this point that you actually substitute in from your equation. So we have the mercury 2 ion on top and the silver ion in the denominator. The silver ion will be squared because of the coefficient two. Solids and liquids you can ignore. So then we plug in and our E naught is, so our E equals negative 0 0.055 volts. The number of electrons were two. Please label your electron, just have to write E. Not asking a lot. Uh, the mercury is a huge change, 0 0.001. And the silver is 0.8 squared. All right, you plug in and you should get my answer up there. You're going to have those nice little boxes to fill in. Um, so then you will be asked, does the answer make sense? Is there questions up to that point? I did have one. Go ahead. Uh, where does the two come from again for the electrons? The two for the, right there. The I know. Do you see my pen? Yeah. It's pointing at two electrons. It's from the equation. Your two half reactions, the electrons that cancel out. Okay. So see the silver had two? Mm hmm And this has two. So we've seen two a lot because it is actually the most common charge for cations by and far. Most cations plus two is a really stable place to be. Um, but it's not so going to be always have to be a two. No, if you go back a page, the one we did here, like our nickel was two, but the one we did up here, this would have been a six because that was the number we had to use to cancel out. Okay. So it's a really important question Alexander just asked. Because um, that's actually the piece that's really one of the newest new pieces. Um, does the answer make sense? The piece that changed is the mercury. The silver did change. It only changed a little bit. The mercury is changing by a thousand fold. So we're seeing a huge decrease in the mercury. The mercury, again, was the product, shifts forward. I like to write the word shift partly so you guys can all follow, but that will help you also. Um, and it shows that you really understand. So it shifts forward. We saw an increase in the cell potential. Absolutely. We actually shifted it enough. We reduced it enough that we actually made it into a spontaneous um, cell. So you can take something that would be non-spontaneous and trick it using Le Chatelier's principle. So back to what Natasha was teaching today with um, if you reduce something, if we reduce it so much and really push it forward, we can make this, make this work. All right. Um, I wanted to mention about C and D. This is always going back to the chart value, unless I would tell you otherwise. So for delta G or standard delta G, and the way we know that is K, K always goes with the chart value. Um, so you would just punch in and remind, so back to the question um, Alexander just asked. 
that N is again the two electrons. There is a negative. You can just write F for Faraday's constant. I am perfectly fine with that. You can make your F however you like. Um, so usually we're in person. We've been together like every day, all the time. Um, the E is that one up there. The negative 0 0.055. And again, I recommend you don't write it as volts, but you write it as joules per coulomb. I actually recommend you write your F out, but if you know it, it was the 96. I'll write it underneath in case you forgot. 96,500 coulombs per electron. Um, you're going to have that extra step of a thousand dividing by a thousand joules to change the kilojoules. And the answer comes out as 11 kilojoules. You can leave it in joules. You would just have 11,000 joules. Uh, this is what I was trying to say earlier that I just do change my E to delta G and then my delta G to K because when you do your homework in your worksheet for today, the entropy one, um, let's do, yeah, today, it's Wednesday, uh, you will be using this equation and feel familiar with it. You will rearrange it so you'll end up with right, negative 11 um, kilojoules over R and T, and then E to the power of that. So you have to change the sign because of this negative. Um, R, you want to change the kilojoules, the T is the 298, and this is our K value. That's all just crunching, punching numbers in. So if you have a question, that's what I have office hours for or you can, those of you who are here can stay after. Um, you will then be explaining, once again, why this all makes sense. So why does this make sense? It all goes together. Anybody wanna tell me why this all makes sense? Putting it all together. So our E is, Negative, going back up here. Our K, I'm sorry, our delta G, our free energy is positive. And our K, it's not we're looking at K as positive or negative. We're looking at K as if it's greater than or less than one. And this K is less than one. All of these pieces mean non-spontaneous just means you have to keep pushing somehow. And in chemistry, a push can be Le Chatelier's where we can trick it, or that it's reactant favored. So again, non-spontaneous doesn't mean it can't happen. It just can't happen without um, you continually pushing. So in this case, Le Chatelier's principle is pushing. Questions with this page. And that would be page 55. So I think we're on the back. Go ahead, Natasha. If you don't have a question, the next page, um, go ahead and try it. Do your two half reactions while I answer her question. Go ahead. Real quick, um, when you're saying the E is negative, but yeah. you're saying it's the first E? Yeah, you're looking at E, yes. These questions. The chart that we so, I should rewrite this page. Usually question B is the last question. And I think I did it better on the, um, on the homework. So usually I have you find the E naught and then find the delta G and the K. Okay. And then usually it's a different question will have you do the E naught and the E. I was just trying to be thrifty and do it all in one question. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you're going back. These are comparing to E naught. And down here, so these are all the standards. Um, and the other way is because if it's a K, it's using standard values. If it's Q, it's when it's non-standard. Okay. That's, that's actually the real answer with that. All right, anybody else have a question or we're gonna do another one of these. And this other one, hydrogen, which means we get to bring in pH. All right, so. Right, 
do our two half reactions. So go ahead and write your two half reactions. The hydrogen ion uh, will have the two electrons. Again, it doesn't matter if you put the electrons first or last. It just matters that they're on the correct side of the equation. Um, when you look on the chart, this is what is considered standard is the hydrogen cell. It is what they designated as a zero. So it is zero volts. They just said, we're gonna make this one as a zero. The zinc is the one that is flipped, so you change its value to a positive 0 0.763 volts, and we add them together. So before we go on, we're going to do something with these because they're pretty straightforward. Before we do our math, uh, which one's your anode? Is it the zinc? Yeah, so you, when you're asked that, don't don't guess. What you want to do is go back and do your oxidation reduction. So for me, I do it as Leo Ger. My zinc is losing, so Leo, Leo is the anode. And Harrison, which one is the positive polarity? He's not sure. So the anode is always going to be actually. So race for a second. In this. So the anode is negative. So the one that's positive is the hydrogen because um, it's a cathode. So I corrected myself real quick because I know where we're going tomorrow. This is spontaneous because we got a positive. This will work. This is an electrochemical cell. This is where we get to draw the bridge with the cats walking towards the cathode and the onions, the onions floating towards the anode and all that stuff. This will work. The electrons are flowing to the cathode and then the anions would be flowing that way. So we'd have a full circuit. Um, all right. So I'm going to state my formula, E equals E naught um, plus wait, zero, 0 0.0257 over N. And then we're saying natural log of Q. I'm going to write my expression out. And the reason why, the only thing you're not going to show in Q is the solid, which is the zinc. So you're going to have the zinc ion and the hydrogen gas. So you just write H2 on top. You're multiplying because it's a K expression. You put a big bracket. And then the denominator is the hydrogen ion squared. Just a reminder, the reason it is squared is because we had a coefficient. So there's our formula. Um, I don't remember what I was going to say. All right, the E naught is what we just did. We're going to plug in. No, we are, this time it's a little different. I gave you the E, so that is the C, the 0.45 volts. The E naught is from the chart, the 0.763. Uh, and then back to the question Alexander asked, the electrons come from the one, the electrons that would have canceled out up above. And two, shows up all the time. Not always, but a lot, because it's really common. Um, so the zinc and the hydrogen are one, and then I'm gonna have x squared in my denominator. All right, the algebra of this. Go ahead, Natasha. Real quick, why is it the plus zero? I know, I was thinking I did a plus, didn't I? It's a minus, because your teachers okay. Okay. Because <laughs> your teacher is not using a chalkboard, and I would so much be happier with that. Um, my brain is trying to rewire itself after 25 years, so, so this would be my negative two. Yeah, I was, thank you, sorry. 
I could say I was doing that on purpose, right? To see who caught me. Um, so she gets another bonus point. I have to find where I write my bonus points so I can remember. You guys solving? Are you waiting for me to go through this algebra? Um, and I want to explain why this one makes sense. All right. So some of you have a solve function, which is great. I want to point out a couple things. Um, so you're solving for the x. This is, I should point out, that is a minus sign. Um, it, you know, you would not know that I was here unless I made a mistake. And so I think I'd been almost flawless. That would have been hysterical. To move this 0.73 over, you are going to subtract it because it is a term. It, and so we move it over there. We subtract, which will give us what? Negative 0.313. I think that's right. And then this piece, you move over by flipping it. So you're going to cross multiply. So you're going to multiply by the two electrons and divide by the negative 0 0.0257. All right, that whole craziness. And again, this is just going through the algebra. Um, that equals the natural log of this. To get rid of the natural log, we would do e to the power of that whole thing. And then you do the square root. And you will have the wrong answer because that is going to still be just 1 over x. So you have to flip it also. Um, and then you will get to an answer. Once you find x, x is your hydrogen concentration. Your last step would be, I didn't give enough room here for those of you who have to walk through all the pieces there. Um, if you're having trouble, most people won't look at this until probably tomorrow or Friday. Um, but that would be why I'm having office hours Thursday and Friday, and I'm actually willing to have office hours Sunday evening. Um, so if you would like me to do an office hour Sunday evening, just send me an email. You send over the weekend. Um, or I might just check in to see. And that will get us a pH. So it's all these steps. Again, we're calling it hydrogen ion instead of correctly hydronium because uh, we're worrying more about the oxidation reduction here. So the thing I want to go over before you all tune out, or for those of you still tuning in, is I want you to tell me why this answer makes sense. Actually, what I want you to do, so if you've been listening at home and you want to send me an email for that bonus point, this is my question. What is standard pH? Because what we're doing is we're comparing this answer when we were up here. So let's back up a step. It was a question actually Natasha had asked me on the previous page. Standard was the chart that was 0.763. That was when everything was one molar and one ATM. So given that, what is standard pH? For you guys here, you can get a bonus point for yourself. And then everybody else, I should turn it off and see. Um, it's really simple. Nobody? Oh, so, what? Sorry, I, I thought I didn't realize you were asking the question. Natasha had her hand up first. It's really fascinating because some of you do raise your hand like politely, like you're in class, and, and other people just like blurt, which is good too because usually I can't see anything anyway. Um, yeah, Jim's like, yay, some people should. So go ahead, Natasha. The uh, standard so pH. That standard pH would be seven, neutral? No. What were you going to say, Harrison? He's not sure. Oh, Jim, I, just, I didn't no? know that you'd asked a question. I didn't know what the question was. I'm sorry. What is standard pH? Right, because we're all falling asleep today. It's hump day, but the end is near. So go get sunshine. We're almost done. My question is, what is standard pH? So I'm going to tell you a little story. My dad was a chemical engineer, went to Pitt. My mom was a chemist. Actually, there were only three women in the class um, way back when, that would be in the 50s. 
Uh, but there was a quote, my dad remembers, there was this guy who always came to class late. He always like was disheveled and sat there and he, he like everybody's like, why is this kid even here? He's obviously getting an F. And then one day the teacher did a pop quiz, he wrote the question on the board and they all pulled out their blue books because you always went to class with the blue book. And then they all sat there for an hour writing the answers. And this kid, he sat down, wrote an answer and walked out. He was the only one who got it because it was this question. <laughs> Because it's so simple. My sister actually has the same story from pharmacy school that everybody got so lost in their heads they didn't see how simple this question was. Jim, do you know? You took your microphone off. Um, this would be uh, less than seven, right? It is less than seven, but I'm looking for a specific number. Oh. And when I, I write the number, you're all going to go, really? So if Stan... If standard conditions are one molar, you're doing the negative log of one. Oh. What is the negative log of one? The big fat zero. So standard pH is zero. It is a lot less than one, Jim. This would like burn you. You would not in lab say to me, what should I do? I got something on me. You would be like at the sink rinsing your hand um, and your lab partner would be saying, um, they spilled some really strong concentrated acid, but so the standard cell, the pH is zero. So we're gonna go through our explanation. So those of you at home, you gotta be able to explain this in your words, not my words, because my words are crazy. So what happened is we're gonna walk through this backwards because the pH is higher. An increase in pH means what happened to the hydrogen concentration? hydrogen concentration is lower. All right, remember those always. So my pH is higher than standard. Standard is zero. My pH is higher, which means my hydrogen's lower. Now we do Le Chatelier. Hydrogen is on the reactant side here. So the reaction is gonna shift. You know, you guys can all do your hands moving, but I get really confused in Zoom which way your hands are moving because I haven't figured out if we're flipped or not. Um, so it's going to shift reverse. And I also can't figure out my camera. And I think Joey plays tricks on me and some days he flips it and some days he doesn't. So he would say he would never do that. Um, are you guys all, by the way, giggling or gratitude or giggles are really good? That's why I told you, Natasha, you got to giggles. I, I've enjoyed people's papers. Um, all right. If it's just reverse, you're going to see a decrease in E because it's less spontaneous. So did we see a decrease in E? Our standard was 0.763 and we did see a decrease in E. It was 0.45. This is the cause. This was the effect. Um, the thing was, we were solving for the cause. So I recommend you always do it in that order. <laughs> so if my pH was higher than normal, it means the hydrogen dropped, which is the shift. The change in the E did not cause the shift. The change in the E is always the result of the shift. We're gonna do more of these tomorrow and on your homework and stuff. That's always a big question that comes up. Um, all right, if you want, I'm gonna walk through the next one, which is, we just do the setup. You guys know how to do this, right? I'm gonna state my formula again, just so I <laughs> make sure everybody caught my mistake. But it is a negative, that is correct. And then our natural log, our zinc and our hydrogen are on top and our hydrogen ion squared is on the bottom. This one's much easier to solve because we're just plugging in and solving for E. But back to the question Natasha had asked, um, she didn't actually ask this but I want to point it out because she reminded me of it. Whenever we're doing this, this is why you want to write that E naught. That is the chart. That was the very first number. So the 0.763 volts 
minus the 0 0.0257. The n is another really important question. That was the number of electrons that were gained and lost. That's why you're going to write your half reactions like I've been doing throughout. So you have your two electrons and then your natural log. The top is one again and find the hydrogen. So remember 10 to the negative pH is your hydronium or hydrogen concentration. So I'm just going to write this as 10 to the negative 4.19 and then that gets squared. You can punch in and figure out what 10 to the negative 4.19 is, and then you can square it, but it's one over that, blah, blah, blah. You punch the whole thing in, and we get 0.515. So, it's all just number crunching. It's going to be, yeah, showing your work. State the formula, state what you plug in, state the answer. And then you're going to explain to me why does it make sense. So I'm going to take a deep breath, give you a chance to write down your own answer of why this answer makes sense. So there's only one thing that changed from standard, and it's the pH. So Any of you guys who are here want to explain? Feel like you're ready to explain? Somebody wait here, so we'll see if somebody didn't get a bonus point. So either Juliana or Jim, you want to walk through the explanation? All right, Harrison, go for it. Um, is it because our pH has decreased, so we have more hydrogen? And so... Oh, um, you have it backwards. What? Standard is a pH of zero, so we have a higher pH. A oh, lower higher we in regards to the previous. All right, back to what Natasha's question was. So you could, you're not going to have it where it's this one and that one. It would be just one of these. You're always comparing back to what the original was. Um, but I see what your answer is. So. For mine, comparing to standard, and I actually will answer what he just said, um, and thank you, I'm seeing the problem with rewriting my notes, was um, I, I was trying to be efficient and just do one equation and do different questions on it. Comparing to the standard, it's the same answer. We increase the pH from standard, so the hydrogen decreases. We see the shift reverse. And so I decreased the E compared to standard. Now, what Harrison was answering, and I just realized, was he was comparing B to C. And so I would be more specific when I ask that, um, I suppose, or I could tell from your answer. So he is correct. If you look at comparing B and C, the answer to C is higher than B because the pH is actually lower, which means you have more hydrogen, so it's actually shifted forward a little bit. Um, and so this voltage on C is higher than the voltage on B. That's what you were going for there. Yeah, yeah that's right. I just realized that. So you're good. You already got your bonus point. All right. Um, if you want, you can draw your cell out. We already talked about that. So that's it. I'm going to pause unless there's a question or stop.